Hey there, viewers. What's that up in the air? It looks like an airplane, but wait, there's smoke coming out of it. Do we call the airport, the National Guard, the president? Surely this is something to be freaking out over. Well, while you're looking up at the airplane emitting smoke from its wings, the passengers on the aircraft are busy preparing for landing. That's right, they're certain they'll land in one piece in spite of the smoke, which begs the question, where's that smoke coming from? When you notice something smoke-like coming out from an airplane's wings, don't be alarmed. The pilot is preparing for landing and is dumping fuel before the plane reaches the airport. But wait, isn't that the equivalent of dumping money? Interestingly, it's cheaper to dump fuel while landing than to land with half a tank. You're confused? It's all right, we were too. But don't worry, we're here to tell you why airplanes dump fuel before landing in the most simplistic way possible. Landing with half a tank versus an empty tank In early 2020, a British Airways flight BA-269 from London to Los Angeles had a problem with one of its flaps and had to return to London shortly after taking off. The plane had flown from Heathrow International Airport just a few minutes ago, but spent the better part of an hour over the Atlantic Sea dumping fuel before returning. Why was that? The plane was a mid-sized Boeing 787-9, a plane whose size uses approximately approximately two and a half tons of fuel per hour. Jet fuel costs over $600 per ton or $1,500 per hour. The British Airways flight BA-269 would have had to travel approximately 11 hours or dump about $16,500 worth of fuel before returning back to Heathrow. Did the plane really have to dump all of its fuel before returning back to the airport? Well, not necessarily. The pilots were cautioned to not dump all of the plane's fuel over the ocean for two very obvious reasons. The plane needed a good supply of fuel to make its return back to Heathrow and the environmental risk associated with dumping tons of fuel over the ocean. Passengers on board the aircraft took a few pictures from their window seats. The fuel wasn't being dumped in the form of liquid spraying out of the wings, as you would have assumed, but as a cloud of smoke coming out of its wings. Anyone on ground would have for sure thought the plane was about to crash. But the question is, why did the pilots waste money and cause a potential environmental hazard on purpose? The plane had only just taken off from Heathrow before realizing there was a problem with one of its flaps. Wouldn't it have been a lot easier for the pilot to redirect the aircraft straight back to the airport? Sounds like the obvious choice, right? All those questions are valid, but the pilot's reasons for dumping fuel are a lot more reasonable than one might expect. To better understand why they thought it was necessary to dump fuel, we're going to have to look at two important aviation concepts, MLW and MTOW. What are MLW and MTOW? MLW stands for Maximum Landing Weight, and MTOW stands for Maximum Takeoff Weight. MLW and MTOW are important aviation concepts because MLW is never equal to MTOW. Let's say you're preparing to board a flight. If it's a mid-sized carrier, such as a Boeing 737, it weighs around 80,000 kilograms during takeoff. This weight includes the weight of the airplane itself, the weight of the passengers and cargo on board, and the fuel needed for the journey. The fuel comprises to almost a fraction of the plane's weight, that is, around 18,000 kilograms. By the time the plane makes it to its destination, it's burnt almost all of the fuel it took off with, which means the MLW, or maximum landing weight, is approximately 18,000 kilograms less than the MTOW. The British Airways flight might have landed back with a weight equivalent to the MTOW, but it would have put a lot of pressure on the aircraft. When the aircraft is landing back on the landing strip, it's working alongside the force of gravity plus its own weight. The velocity of its impact plus the combined weight of the jet and gravity results in an extremely high pressure situation for the cockpit. They have to find a way to minimize the heat that's dissipated while landing such a heavy vehicle at such a high speed. That sounds pretty complicated, so we'll sum it up. Landing a heavy vehicle generates more heat than landing a lighter vehicle, which means that more heat is generated which can inadvertently damage the aircraft and harm the people inside. Do aircrafts usually dump fuel? 
aircrafts do not usually dump fuel. This is mostly because airplane tanks are filled with just enough fuel to get them to their destination, and then some in case of emergencies. The extra fuel in this case doesn't contribute much to the overall weight of the plane and therefore doesn't pose an immediate risk. Airplanes have enough fuel to get them from point A to point B for any scheduled flight. However, emergencies do happen. Someone on board might be having a medical crisis. In any other case, such as for the British Airways flight, the pilots burnt more fuel by lowering their tires. When it comes to a medical emergency, time is of the essence. Heavier metal birds usually have a complicated but intricate fuel system that dissipates fuel from the engines to the plane's wings. In case of an emergency landing, the crew in the cockpit can press a fuel dumping prompt and eject fuel out of the plane's wings. The fuel is dumped at the rate of several tons per minute, but not all planes have this intricate fuel system. Narrower air buses cannot dump fuel. In case of an emergency landing, these planes have to land with an MLW equivalent to its MTOW. There's an inherent risk of a fuel explosion, but don't worry, the crew over at the airbase has been trained to deal with such situations and can safely direct a plane back in one piece. Where does the fuel go? Here's something you've probably been wondering throughout the video. Where exactly does the fuel go? Should we be on high alert for jet fuel pouring down from the sky? Don't worry, pilots make sure they're dumping fuel over remote areas if and when the situation demands it. Dumping fuel isn't something pilots actively want. They'll try to dissipate as much fuel by flying in circles as they can, but this isn't always easy considering that other planes might follow the same path. Dumping fuel is a last resort sort of thing. Pilots won't press the prompt until they've exhausted all other measures. Now, there's an obvious environmental risk attached to the dumping of fuel over remote areas. For example, the British Airways carrier had to dump tons of fuel over the Atlantic Ocean. This would have had an irreversible impact on the marine habitat living right beneath the dumping site. It's unfavorable, yes, but it's also unavoidable in certain cases. Has it ever rained jet fuel on people? Interestingly enough, it has. In 2020, the Delta 777 had to return shortly after takeoff from LAX. The plane dumped fuel while at low altitude on approach, and a few people, including a number of kids at school, received an unexpected dose of jet fuel. But don't worry, they're all okay. Three nasty things airlines do to minimize costs. 1. Cleaning between flights An average mid-sized carrier seats between 100 to 300 passengers per flight, and no two people share the same amount of interest in cleanliness. Plus, flights are scheduled daily. The same flight that just landed in Heathrow from LAX has to make a flight to Melbourne now. Cleaning an aircraft between flights sounds like a reasonable thing to do, right? Well, in 2021, Southwest Airlines announced that they'd be minimizing turnover time by only disinfecting high-touch areas. What areas count as high-touch areas? Overhead carriers, tabletops, and bathrooms. What areas do not count as high-touch? Armrests and seatbelts. Not surprisingly, this announcement wasn't met with a warm reception. However, Southwest Airlines maintains their stance and claims that's actually beneficial for passengers since now they don't have to wait too long. Number two, food prep. What really is the deal with airline food? The punchline to every joke known to man has since become one of those things we have to deal with. Meals on airlines are subpar. There's no surprise there. But did you know that airlines prepare their meals 24 hours to 72 hours in advance? Airline food is prepared by industrial caterers on ground, and since they have to prepare a large amount of food in a short amount of time, they prepare food one to three days ahead of a scheduled flight. Number three, cramped seats. Did you know that standard protocol dictates planes need to have ample space between seats? This might come as a surprise to most frequent flyers who have often found themselves in a tight spot after someone in front of them has reclined their seat a little too far back. The truth is, airlines try to save their money by adding in more seats than necessary. This compromises on customer satisfaction, but the airline gets to sell a few extra seats. All right, let us know in the comments on why planes dump fuel before landing. What do you think? Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to Inforama, and check out some of our other videos, and we'll see you in the next one.